Now in this question, what I've done is I've copied the diagram and we've got this force then of 49 newtons coming into this object, keeping it in equilibrium on the plane here. Now, what we need to do is first of all mark in the forces acting on this particle. And as I've said in many tutorials, if I've always got a force coming into an object, generally I like to get rid of it and have it coming out of the object purely because I find that it simplifies the problem. So what I'm going to do is to just extend this force of 49 newtons out the other side like this, 49 newtons. And it would mean that if I was to have a dotted line say from here up the plane it would mean that this angle in here would now be theta. So I would encourage you to do that and we'll get rid of that part okay, of the diagram. So that's how I would uh, mark on the 49 newtons. Now the other thing we need to do is put on all the other forces. It's got a weight, okay, that would be 6g because it's a mass of 6 uh, kilograms, so it's 6g newtons acting downwards. There's going to be a reaction perpendicular to the plane, so we'll call that R newtons acting away from the plane. Now whenever you get plane questions, Again, I would also encourage you to look at having a dotted line parallel with the plane and also perpendicular to the plane. And what that means is that always the angle of the plane here is always this angle in here. Okay, so in this case that's 30 degrees. Now we've got to show that the cos of theta is equal to three-fifths. And in order to do this, what I'm going to do is just show you another diagram which you don't really have to draw on. I just think that it might be useful. I'm going to do an equivalent diagram to this one. I'll put an identical sign there. We're looking at the forces, or we're going to look at the forces, acting perpendicular and parallel to the plane. And this problem is going to involve resolving forces and quite often find that still I get people who struggle with resolving. So just looking at this again, what we've got is we've got R Newtons acting in that direction. Okay, It's on the dotted line. But the weight and this force of 49 newtons are not on these dotted lines. Let's take the weight, for instance, the 6g newtons. It's not on a dotted line. And what we can do is we can split it into two components. One going in that direction and one going in that direction. Okay, So that this force is in between those two. So we've got what we call components, a component down the plane coming from the weight and a component into the plane from the weight. Now, whenever you've got an angle that's contained between your force and the direction of your component, if you've got an angle marked in like this, 30 degrees, it's cosine. It's going to be 6g cosine of 30 degrees. That's the amount of force coming from the weight here. Then the other component, because it doesn't contain the angle, is going to be 6g sine of 30 degrees. So it's always cosine when it contains the angle, sine when it excludes the angle. Now for the 49 newtons, this can be split into two components, one up the plane and one into the plane. What is the one that contains the angle up the plane? It contains the angle. It's going to be a cosine. So this force up the plane coming from the 49 newtons is going to be 49 cos of theta. And the one into the plane, because it doesn't contain the angle, is going to have the component 49 sine theta. Okay. Now all of these are forces, all the units are going to be newtons, so should really strictly have newtons at the end of each one. 
So, in order to solve this problem and all the other parts of the problem, we need to think of diagrams like this. So, what we do is we essentially resolve up the plane. We resolve up the plane and because this particle is in equilibrium, there's going to be no overall resultant force acting parallel to the plane. So if I resolve up the plane, we've got 49 cos theta up the plane. And then we've got this force acting down the plane. That's going to be minus 6g sine 30 degrees. And they're the only two forces wanting to move the particle either up or down the plane. These forces are, and the components down here, have no effect because they're at right angles to the direction that we're resolving in. So this is the resultant force and it equals zero. Now normally I wouldn't draw this diagram, I would work off this diagram. But it's just I've put this up here just so that you can see what's going on. What we need to do now is make cosine theta the subject and we can do that by adding 6g sine 30 to both sides and then dividing through by 49. And if you work that out, you'll either get 0 0.6 or as an exact fraction, that is 3 fifths. And that's how you find cos theta equals 3 fifths. OK, so I know that I might have gone on a bit here, but it's just so that hopefully you can see how we can split forces into components. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the first part of this question.